Hi everyone, my name is Miss Sarah and I am in Baltimore. Today we're going to be reading three short stories from Berry Tales that all have different fun little nutrition messages. So let's get started. Little Red Riding Hood. Once upon a time in a small village, not too far from here, there lived a little country girl. She was the happiest and healthiest little girl in the land. Her mother was very fond of her and her grandmother loved to spoil her even more. One birthday, her grandmother had a little red riding hood made for her. It suited the girl so well that everybody from then on called her Little Red Riding Hood. One day, Little Red Riding Hood's mother said, I'm worried about your grandmother. I hear she has been feeling very tired and weak. I used my plate to help me choose some yummy foods to make her healthy and strong. Please take this basket filled with a turkey sandwich on whole wheat bread, fresh veggie sticks, orange slices, a small bowl of low sodium chicken soup, a refreshing ice cold bottle of low fat milk, and one small piece of chocolate. This wonderful food will give her energy and she'll be back on her feet in no time. Little Red Riding Hood set out immediately to go visit her grandmother, who lived in another village several miles down the road. As she was walking through the woods, Little Red Riding Hood met a wolf. He had just finished eating a very unhealthy lunch. An entire cake, a bag of chips, a big bowl of ice cream, and an entire box of chocolates. The wolf asked, where are you going, little girl? Little Red Riding Hood said to him, I'm going to see my tired grandmother. She is very weak and barely has strength to move. I'm bringing her some healthy foods, including a turkey sandwich, fresh veggie sticks, orange slices, a small bowl of low sodium chicken soup, a refreshing ice cold bottle of low fat milk, and one small piece of chocolate so that she can regain her health. As Little Red Riding Hood described all of the healthy foods in her basket, the wolf's stomach felt queasy. For you see, Wolves from this forest only like to eat junk food, sweet treats, and unhealthy people. This wolf did not like to eat any healthy foods or strong and healthy people. However, when he heard Little Red Riding Hood mention her weak grandmother, he immediately decided that he would like to gobble up the grandmother as a snack. Does she live far off? asked the wolf. Oh, I'd say answered Little Red Riding Hood. It is beyond that mill you see there, at the first house in the village. Well, said the wolf, I shall go and see her too. Little Red Riding Hood feared that the wolf would reach her weak grandmother and gobble her up, so she dashed off in a hurry. The wolf ran after her as fast as he could, but he could not keep up with Little Red Riding Hood. For you see, Little Red Riding Hood always made sure half of her plate was fruits and vegetables. She also chose for half of her grains to be whole grains based on the My Plate recommendations. Little Red Riding Hood was always physically active for at least 60 minutes a day, so she was very strong. Even though she enjoyed occasional treats, as most children do, she was very careful not to eat too many sweets. And Little Red Riding Hood was very healthy and could run very fast. But the wolf could not run very fast. The wolf ate nothing but junk food and never exercised. His tummy was filled with an entire cake, bag of chips, a large bowl of ice cream, and a whole box of chocolates. When he finally reached the grandmother's house, he knocked on the door. Tap, tap, tap. Who's there? asked grandmother. Little Red Riding Hood's mother, replied the wolf, imitating her voice. I brought you some sweet treats to make you feel better. I have a cake, a bag of chips, a bowl of ice cream, and a box of chocolates. Just then, the front door swung open. The grandmother, who had regained her health and strength, was able to grab onto the wolf. Since she followed the My Plate Healthy Eating recommendations, she was so strong and healthy, and he was so slow, that she was able to tie a leash around his neck. The wolf cried out, 
How did you know that I was not Little Red Riding Hood's mother? The grandmother replied, Well, everyone in my family is very healthy, and no one other than a wolf would bring me all of those sweets. After the grandmother captured the wolf, she felt sorry for him, for she could see that he was very unhealthy. So she decided to keep him as a pet and name him Fido. Together, Grandmother and Fido used my plate to help them choose a variety of healthy foods that would give them energy. Even though the wolf thought he only liked unhealthy foods, after tasting different kinds of fruits and vegetables, he discovered that he actually liked them. Now Grandmother is sure to feed them both plenty of fruits and vegetables, and they take nice long walks every day. Occasionally, they will enjoy a few sweets together. But they are careful not to have too much or eat oversized portions. Now, whenever Little Red Riding Hood comes to visit, she exclaims, Wow, Fido, what big muscles you have! That's because your grandmother and I exercise for 60 minutes a day. Wow, why, Fido? What big teeth you've got! That's because I floss and brush twice a day. Why, Fido? What sharp eyes and a beautiful coat you have. That's because I follow my plate recommendation and make sure half of my plate is fruits and vegetables. And they all lived happily and healthily together forever. The end. All right, so before we move on to our next little story, I want you all to think about how your body feels when you eat healthy foods and when you're physically active. Do you feel stronger? Do you have more energy? Um, are, do you, are you able to sleep better at night? And then after you think about that, I want you to talk with your family and you tell each other what are your favorite healthy foods that you like to enjoy and how they make you feel when you eat them. The Three Little Pigs Once upon a time, there lived three little pigs. These three little pigs were brothers with very different personalities. The first little pig loved to listen to music. He never liked to run around and play, and he was a very picky eater. The only foods that he liked to eat were from the grains group like pastas, breads, and rice. The second little pig loved to read. He never liked to play outside and his nose was always stuck in a book. His favorite animal was the cow. He especially loved reading books about cows. The only foods he liked to eat were milk, cheeses, and yogurt. These are all dairy foods made from milk, which comes from cows. Like both of his brothers, the third little pig loved to listen to music and read, but he also enjoyed dancing, hiking, and playing sports. All of these activities are great forms of physical activity. The third pig enjoyed eating all of the foods his brothers liked, as well as fruits, vegetables, meats, beans, and nuts, but he was careful to make sure his portions weren't too big. Half of his plate was filled with fruits and vegetables based on the recommendations from my plate. When he enjoyed foods from the dairy group, he chose low-fat or fat-free products. Even though these three brothers were different, they loved each other very much. When they were old enough to move out of their parents' house, they decided to build their homes next door to each other. Because the first little piggy loved to eat grains, he built his home from straw. Since straw is very lightweight, his home was very easy and very fast to build. Because the second little piggy loved the cows and dairy products so much, he wanted his home to look like a barn. He used sticks to build his home. The sticks were heavier than straw, but still very easy to build. Since the last little piggy used my plate to help him make healthy choices and he was physically active every day, he was the strongest of all the brothers. He decided to build his home from bricks. 
The bricks were very heavy and it took him a long time to build his house. While the last piggy brother was finishing his brick home, the first little brother decided to have his friend, Fido the Wolf, come over and celebrate. As Fido knocked on the door, the straw house fell to the ground. The first little piggy instantly realized that he should not have depended solely on grains for a healthy body and a strong house. The first little piggy and Fido went next door to tell the second little piggy what had happened. As they entered the stick home and Fido slammed the door shut, the stick house fell to the ground. The second little piggy instantly realized that he should not have depended solely on dairy products for a healthy body and a strong house. The two little piggies and Fido went to tell the third little piggy what happened. As they knocked on the door, they held their breath for fear that the house would fall down. As Fido closed the door behind him, he closed his eyes and hoped that this house would also not collapse. They were shocked to find that the house was still standing. The first little piggy banged on the walls. The second little piggy and Fido jumped up and down, but still the house did not fall. The third little piggy was puzzled why his brothers and friend were acting so strange. They soon explained what had taken place and the third little piggy began to laugh. He told the others about all the hard work that was required to make a sturdy house. He also informed them that he was able to build the house because his body was so strong and healthy. The variety of physical activity and well-balanced food he enjoyed gave him the strength to carry the bricks. Even though he enjoyed grains and dairy products, his body was very healthy because he also ate fruits, vegetables, and protein foods, including meats, beans, and nuts. He told them that it is very important to try new foods and eat a variety of foods. If you limit yourself to one food group, you will not be able to grow strong and healthy. Upon learning this information, the first and second little piggy decided to take the last little piggy's advice. They decided to use my plate to help choose healthy meals. They began to run, dance, and play outside every day and try a variety of foods so that their bodies would be stronger. After a few weeks of healthy choices, the three little pigs built two more strong and sturdy houses together. All right, the end. So I want to just highlight some of the messages that made the third healthiest piggy able to build his strong house. He followed the my plate messages. One being make half your plate fruits and vegetables. Two, make half of the grains. So foods like bread and pasta and rice, make half of those whole grain. And when you choose dairy products like milk and cheese and yogurt, try to choose low fat or fat free. Um, and lastly, avoid large portions when you eat your sweets. It's okay to eat sweets, but just eating less of those. And then next, I want you all to think about what are some of your favorite ways to be active and some ways to be physically active, like the last healthiest piggy. Um, especially now, what are some ways that you can be physically active inside your house? Maybe brainstorm some of those. Goldilocks and the Three Bears Once upon a time, there was a family of bears who lived in an enchanted forest. In this happy family, there was a papa bear, a mama bear, and a baby bear. Every morning, the bear family begins their day by eating a healthy breakfast together at their kitchen table. After all, everyone knows that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. One sunny day after the three bears enjoyed their delicious breakfast of oatmeal, bananas, and a nice tall glass of milk, they decided to go for a walk and enjoy the beautiful weather. On this day, the bears were so anxious to begin their walk together that they completely forgot to clean up after themselves. The entire kitchen was a mess. The bowls of oatmeal were still at their place settings. 
the banana slices were left uncovered and the milk carton remained on the table. Anyway, two hours had passed by and the bears had still not returned from their walk. A little girl named Goldilocks happened to stumble upon the bear's home in the forest. She knocked and when no one answered, she walked right in. As she entered the kitchen, she could see the morning's breakfast on the table. Even though she could tell that the food had been sitting out for a long time without being refrigerated or covered, she was very, very hungry and decided to taste the food anyways. She decided to take a few bites out of each dish. The Papa Bear's oatmeal was too sticky and chewy. Mama Bear's banana slices were very brown, and Baby Bear's milk was really warm. After she'd eaten the bear's family's breakfast, she was feeling a little tired, so she went upstairs to the bedroom. She laid down on the first bed, but it was too hard. Then she laid on the second bed, but it was too soft. Then she laid down in the third bed, and it was just right. Soon after lying down, Goldilocks didn't feel very well. Her whole body began to feel very warm. She tossed and turned, but she couldn't get comfortable. Her whole body ached. Her stomach began to grumble and churn. Suddenly, Goldilocks starts to throw up. As she was lying in the bed feeling very green, the three bears came home. As soon as they entered their house, Mama Bear exclaimed, Oh my goodness, I cannot believe we forgot to clean up our mess from breakfast. This food has been sitting out for more than two hours. I'll have to make sure I throw it all away so that none of us get sick. After the family looked closely, Papa Bear noticed, Uh-oh, I think someone's been eating my oatmeal. Someone's been eating my bananas, said the Mama Bear. And someone's been drinking my milk, cried the Baby Bear. They decided to look around some more, and when they got upstairs to the bedroom, Papa Bear growled. Someone's been sleeping in my bed. Someone's been sleeping in my bed, too, said the mama bear. Someone is sleeping in my bed, and she looks sick, exclaimed baby bear. Just then, Goldilocks looked up and saw the three bears. She told them about how she was hungry and decided to taste their breakfasts. She also explained that soon after eating the breakfast, she became ill. Mama and Papa Bear explained to Goldilocks that she got sick because the food had been sitting out for more than two hours. Goldilocks had a foodborne illness. A foodborne illness happens when people eat food that is not heated or refrigerated properly. Sometimes people can get a foodborne illness if their meat is not cooked long enough. And other times people can get a foodborne illness if they eat things warm, like warm ice cream. Ew! When food has been sitting out for more than two hours, invisible germs begin to grow. If we eat these germs, we can get sick. So just because food looks fine, it can still be bad for us to eat. To make sure no one gets a foodborne illness, it is always very important to keep food heated and refrigerated properly. Never eat food that has been sitting out for more than two hours. It's always essential to ask a responsible adult to let you know when a food is safe to eat. After resting all night at the Bear family home, Goldilocks thanked them for taking care of her. Now she is very careful to never try food that is not heated or refrigerated properly, and she never even tastes anything that has been sitting out for more than two hours. The Bear family is also now sure to clean up after themselves, after each meal, and make sure their leftovers are safely stored in the refrigerator. The End all right, so some of the proper food safety techniques that Goldilocks and the three bears showed us was that when we cook our food, we have to heat it to the proper temperature. And then when we're storing our leftovers, we have to put it in the fridge. Um, it's also not important. It's also, it also is important to make sure food isn't left sitting out um, for more than two hours. So definitely putting that in the fridge. And so cleaning up after we finish eating. Um, and one last food safety technique 
that's very important is washing our hands for 20 seconds with warm and soapy water. And that's something that we should do before we are eating and before we are helping maybe our families cook. So when you're helping um, cook dinner or breakfast, definitely wash your hands. So that is one thing that I want you all to go and practice right now. I want you to go to your sink and put on some warm water and get some soap and count to 20 and really make sure your hands are clean. And one fun way you can do this is pick your favorite song and sing your song as you're washing your hands. All right, thank you so much for joining me today.